could capture audio in this simple application. You can capture audio uh, streams and you can capture bitmaps of video. So here's T Audio Capture Devices, the class coming in in FMX Media. And I'll set that to the variable my audio. So I'll say uh, my audio equals T Capture Device Manager. We'll take the current uh, manager. And in this case, I'll just say the default audio capture device. And now I've got my audio capture. And I'll say if that if it finds that capture device, then we'll set the file name equal to something. And we'll start capture. And we'll keep going. If it couldn't find an audio device to capture audio, then it'll say it's not available. And then we'll keep going till we hit stop capture. Now we also have a, a, a video capture the example that comes with C3. And so it's the same idea underneath here. We'll define a video camera as a T video capture device and then down inside of on the form create we'll say video camera equals T capture de device manager current and then default video capture and if we find uh, a video capture device then we'll simply set the event handler for on sample buffer ready uh, in the case of the capture it captures a frame at a time so we'll set uh, a procedure in that event handler for when the bitmap is ready in the buffer, and then we'll call video camera start capture. And then down below, we'll simply say when the video camera has a bitmap, we'll take that sample buffer to bitmap and store it into the image of the bitmap that'll be on the user interface. And we'll keep doing that until we tell it to stop capturing. We can see if the video state is that it's capturing. If it's capturing, then we're okay, and we can stop it or start it, and we can even save the bitmap. So in this case, I'll, I'll run this on the Macintosh because I'm running a VM here, and I've got the camera associated with the Macintosh. We'll have that application come up, and there's me. Uh, hey, everyone. This is David I. So here's the frames coming in, one frame at a time that's coming in. Uh, Anders took that original uh, video capture example, and he modified it to support new capability in FireMonkey. And the capability is a new component called Texture Material Source. And the Texture Material Source has a property which is a, a texture, which is a bitmap. If you remember in FireMonkey 1, if you looked at it, when you had spheres and other 3D objects, is you could put a bitmap right on top of them. Now you can decouple the texture from the different 3D controls and, and associate the texture with a 3D control. And then that 3D control, for example, like in this viewport 3D inside of a 2D or HD FireMonkey application, we have a sphere. And that sphere, sphere now has a material source, a new property. And I've associated that with my texture material source. Uh, Anders also in this example has a layer. And inside that layer, he's got an image. And so the image that will display. And if we look at the code underneath, Video camera is a capture device manager, uh, the current default uh, video capture. And then notice the next line, which is commented out, video camera, T capture device manager, current, get devices by media type. You can also filter and get all the devices. And what type? The type that we want is T media type dot video. And since this has two cameras, we can either use the zero, first element or second element of the of the device array and we'll cast that as a T capture device. So the default capture device on the Samsung slate is the camera that faces out the back of the slate and then the one or second element in the array will be the built-in camera. And then we set the uh, procedure for the sample buffer ready when it grabs a bitmap and then down at the bottom here we will uh, We'll take that bitmap and put it into the image, which is on the layer in a in the 3D viewport. So it's an image uh, sort of angled uh, away from us. And also we'll set the texture, the same bitmap, as a texture material source in the texture property, which will then texture it onto the sphere. View out the back of the slate. So now there's this is the studio that we're in. That's the there's the uh, clock on the wall. There's Anders over there. Okay, that's using the camera out the back. Let's go back to that line of code and let's use the forward facing camera. So here I am, and that's the forward facing camera. So you've got uh, the support for multiple cameras just by using the device array. And again, you can get devices by a filter type 
uh, by the media type, audio, video, and so on.